In this lesson, we will learn how to edit keyframes in the graph editor, and we'll also learn about our interpolation types for function curves. Let's grab the center of gravity control, and then we'll jump to the graph editor. Alright, sweet, I'll go ahead and focus in on the translate Y channel, and then I'll press the F key to frame in, and we'll get started. So we know that we can move keys by simply selecting the keys to edit. We can then go ahead and grab our move tool with a W key. And then we can use the middle mouse button to adjust the timing and the values of the selected keys. Now keep in mind, we can use the left mouse button to edit the keys the same way. And that's all because of the option that we've taken a look at already. Let's go back to our animation preferences. We'll go to the animation category. And here we have it, right underneath the graph editor section. We see left mouse button alters selections. Let's go ahead and save this out. And watch this. You'll notice that as long as our cursor is close to one of the selected keyframes, we can use the left mouse button to edit, again, the timing and the values of our selected keys. So this might be a very fast way of going in and modifying your keyframes. But sometimes, it can be a bit cumbersome. And that's simply due to the fact that you might be working with a lot of keys that are very close to one another. And if that's the case, well, then it might be easier to disable that option and just work with the middle mouse button to edit your keyframes. Because again, once that left mouse button is close to one of your keys, if you're trying to select a keyframe, well, that might be kind of difficult. As you can see, I tried to just do a quick marquee selection, and since my cursor is near, again, one of the selected keys, that's not possible. However, if we were to go ahead and jump back to our preferences, back to animation, and disable that option, now watch this. The left mouse button is only used to select our keys. Sweet. So it really depends on your workflow. If you like to work with that option, go ahead and enable it. Or if it kind of gets in the way, simply turn it off. All right, cool. Now, how do we remove keyframes? Well, it's as simple as highlighting the keys to remove, and then we'd hit the delete key. Now, in this case, it's probably not a good idea because Rexy is going to kind of hit the floor and doesn't look too well, right? Let's go ahead and press the Z key to bring those keyframes back. You'll notice that when we hit play, right now we have a little hop or skip that he uses to slow down so we can run over to this weird looking tree. <laughs> All right, great. We could also scale keys. We can go ahead and grab the scale manipulator with the R key. And now watch this. As we start to middle click and drag, we're able to adjust our keys according to where the cursor is. So that's our pivot point for the scaling tool. We could also scale keys from the edit menu and in our indie game development series for the ghost knight and for the boss we actually show you how animation can be reversed with the scaling tool. So if you'd like to learn how I'd highly recommend you take a look at the ghost knights course on animation because that came in handy for one of his sequences. Alright, sweet. Now something else I'd like to show you before we get into our interpolation types is the ability to work with simple expressions for our key stats. Let's go ahead and bring our attention to the top toolbar and here we have a few fields. We have our frame field that shows us the current frame a selected key is on and then we have our value field. Now, whenever these fields are purple, that simply means we have multiple keys in our selection that share different values or different frames. So if I were to go ahead and grab just one keyframe, notice how the channels are not purple at all. Now, how do we work with simple expressions? Let's say if we wanted to take the selected keyframes and we wanted to drop them by half the amount. Well, we can go to our value stat and we can type in the following. 
We would first use the operation that we would like to work with, so that's multiplication. And then we would add the equals symbol. After that, we would add the value that we'd like to edit the keys with. So in this case, let's go ahead and add 0 0.5. Once we hit enter, take a look. We have now dropped all values of the selected keys by half the amount. How cool. So this can be super helpful, not only for animations like this, but let's say for a walk cycle where the upper torso might be rotating a bit too much. So what you can do is use an expression like that to drop the amount of rotation so that you get something that is more desirable. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at our interpolation types to finish up. I'll go ahead and grab the center of gravity so we can select all of its keys. I'll go ahead and now press the F key so we can frame in to all animation on this selected object. So what we have first is auto and this is a great tool for polishing animation. What it will do is it will give us a very smooth result but it will also help us to prevent overshoots in an animation. Let's go ahead and have a look at something. If I were to go ahead and grab let's say this rotate Y key on frame 65 I can go ahead and take its out tangent I'll then go ahead and grab the move tool and drag up with the middle mouse button and take a look we've now created an overshoot. Now with auto it's going to remove that overshoot for us so that we don't cause our values to push past what we've already set. So I find that to be super helpful but sometimes we want overshoots just to kind of soften up our actions a bit and if that's the case we can go ahead and work with spline which is the following option. And then we have clamped which is going to help us prevent overshoots as long as a key is very close to another key. So if I were to go ahead and take this key that's on about frame 73 if I were to go ahead and bring that over to this key that we've set to clamped on 65 you can see that as long as it's on the same level as the clamped key Notice, we will not have an overshoot at all. But again, with spline, it's going to push that key a bit further to kind of soften the action. You would not want to use spline for a planted foot because that foot's going to go through your floor. But you can use spline for the upper body if you'd like to loosen it up a bit. Or perhaps the character's head. Sweet, and then we have linear which is going to set everything to a, a constant speed. So I'll go ahead and grab the center of gravity. I'll go ahead and deselect any keys I have selected and use linear. And you'll notice that everything's going to move in a kind of a mechanical way. Linear is great when you need to, let's say, make sure that your feet are moving at a constant rate in a walk or run as the feet plant. And that'll help you to prevent sliding. And you can learn more about that in creating walk cycles and creating run cycles in Maya. We could also use linear to animate our global node to translate our walks and runs forward. But in this case we wouldn't want to use it for the character's upper body. So what we'll do then is go ahead and convert these back to auto to kind of soften up the action a bit. Much better. Now another option we have is stepped. Stepped is going to block out all of your function curves. So we won't see another key's value until we actually get to that value. So watch what happens when we hit play. You'll notice that the animation is going to be very blocky. Why would we want to use this? Well, this is a great way to start an animation. We can go ahead and block it in. And then once we're satisfied with our blocking pass, we can then go ahead and start to refine. You can learn more about this in animation blocking and animation polishing techniques in Maya. Sweet. Now you'll notice that I've kind of skipped over one and that's flat tangents. Simply because it's really straightforward. If I were to go ahead and use flat tangency, you'll notice that everything will be set to flat or zero orientation in your tangents. So this is useful when you want to kind of plant again your feet or perhaps your character's hand that plants on a surface you can go ahead and use flat to make sure that it will not go past that surface which would of course create interpenetration which is not cool. 
So we can use that option here. But chances are you'll work with auto because it's just really convenient. It's just a great way to go in and, again, soften up your actions while still giving you some very smooth interpolation in between your keys. For example, you can see what flat has done here on the rotation Y right here on around frame 50. Whereas if we were to go ahead and set this to auto, you'll notice that it's going to soften out that key. But once this keyframe gets higher than the highest point, you'll notice that the software is going to instantly flatten that out. So take a look at what happens when we work with auto. And plateau works the same way. So I've now switched this to plateau. And you'll see that again, once we start to get to a high point where that key gets a bit higher than the highest key, it's going to go ahead and flatten that out some. But you can see that auto is a bit smoother. That's why it's really nice to stick with auto. Fantastic. So that's how our interpolation types work. At this point, it's just a matter of choosing what works best for you. That way, you can start to create the performances that were perfect for your project.